this is part two to, to the American Standard version, and I uh, only got like a, let's see here, two pages in that, and about three pages all together. <clears throat> Small text, so it's easier to read. <clears throat> so I'm starting off where I left off on um, here. May be mentioned that also that changes made to, for the sake of euphemism have been considerably increased. It has not been possibly possible in every case to find an appropriate substitute for the terms which in modern times uh, have become offensive. Oh, so offensive. But when it has been possible, we have deemed it wise to make the change. Some of the words, as for example, bowels, are tolerable when used in their literal sense, but offensive when employed in a psychological sense. Thus, no other word would be appropriate in Samuel 20.10, but in Jeremiah 4.19 or Lamentation 1.20, to retain that term would be both unpleasant and incorrect. The conception of the writer is not to really reproduce by a literal translation. The Hebrews uh, were accustomed to attribute mental actions or emotion to various psycho, um, physical organs, whereas in English such a trope is limited almost entirely to heart and brain. There is nowhere any occasion for using the latter of these in the Bible. Consequently, it is almost unavoidable that heart should be often be used as the translation of, of different Hebrew words. And scholars know that the Hebrew word commonly rendered heart is used very largely to denote not so much the seat of the emotions as the seat of thought. It is rendered in the authorized version more than 20 times by mind and might will be so rendered much oftener. Oftener? Hmm. The word reigns is one of those which in the Old Testament is used in a psychological relation. Um, the word was retained by the English revisers and was also left without mention by the American revisers when they prepared their appendix. <clears throat> but if the synonymous word kidneys has been used in these passages, there would be an earnest and unanimous protest in favor of the continued use of reins. Therefore, one can only urge the poor reason that most readers attach it to meaning whatever. To, to no meaning whatever. We have consequently rendered regarded it as only a consistent carrying out of our general principle with, when we have uniformly substituted heart for it whenever it is used in a psychological sense. It, in this connection it may be remarked that while the English revisers yielding to the urgent representations of the Americans voted to substitute its for his or her. When relating to impersonal objects not personified, the substitution was so imperfectly made, imperfectly made, um, that we have had occasion to supplement the work in some 200 cases. Furthermore, the general intention of the American revisers to em eliminate obsolete, obscure, and misleading terms has been more fully carried out by replacing some expressions which were left unmentioned in the appendix. Example, bold, in good think, in good liking, you know, Job 39, 4, bold, ex Exodus uh, 9, 31. Uh, closely connected with the foregoing are certain additional alterations which have seemed to be required by regard for pure English idiom, really. We are not insensible to the justly lauded beauty and vigor of the style of the authorized version, oh really. Nor do we forget that it has been no part of our task to modernize the diction of the Bible. Oh yes you have. You definitely have at that time. But we are also aware that the radical force and the antique flavor which we desire to retain do not consist in sporadic instances of uncouth, unidiomatic, or obscure phraseology. 
While we may freely admit that the English of the scriptures can, as a whole, hardly be improved, <laughs> how ironic, hypocritical, yet it would be extravagant to hold that it cannot be better in any of its details. What was once to hold that it cannot be better in any of its okay, well, I skipped over that. What was once good uses is often such no longer, and we can see no sound reason for retaining such expressions as smell there too, uh, forth of, instead of form of, inquire at, a fool's vexation is heavier than them both, I've got scriptures, I'm just not saying them, or when he be jealous over his wife, these are only a few of the many instances of phraseology which there is the best reason for amending. And those examples were Exodus uh, 30 and 38, 1 Kings 22, 5, Proverbs 27, 3, Numbers 5, 30. A change of a more general kind is the introduction of a greater degree of consistency and propriety in the use of the, of the auxiliaries, will and shall. The latter is certainly used to excess in the authorized version, especially when the connected of the verbs denoting an action of the divine being, and two are and the two are also often rarely inconsistently used, as may be observed in such a striking case as Psalm uh, one hundred twenty one three and four. It's got a little X and I's and all that. Stuff. Again, the attempt to translate literally from the original has not infrequently led to Hebraisms, Hebraisms, which have better to better be avoided. Many of these have indeed become, as it were, naturalized in our language, and need not to be not be disturbed. But others must be called bad and outlandish. Thus, in Ezekiel 20:17, we read. Mine eyes spared them from destroying them, which is a very little translation of the Hebrew, but very poor English. Scarcely more tolerable is the expression that they may be to do the service, Numbers uh, 8 and 11, which also comes from over-literalness over to the same class belonging belongs to phrase by the hand of as used after such expressions as Jehovah spake or commanded example in numbers 27 uh, 23 this is indeed a, a literal rendering but the Hebrew really means simply through or by means of and is in the majority of these instances in the authorized version rendered by but sometimes by the hand of manifestly the simple form is a very it's every way preferable, and the change, if any, is made, should be in this direction. Whereas in the English, English revision, by is in nine cases out of 42 changed to by the hand of. Similarly, in the land, in Deuteronomy 5.16, as in several other places, has been changed in the English revision to upon the land, but as land is here equivalent to the to country in the land is clearly the most appropriate oh, darn lights blinking. In both these groups of cases we have everywhere adopted the idiomatic English rather than a slavishly literal rendering. How many more pages I got in here? Ooh. Time. What's the time? Okay, I have to wait 15 minutes. Um, in introducing certain translations different from those of the English Revised Version, and also not directly or implicitly required by the appendix, we have been governed by the conviction that in cases where accuracy and perspicuity clearly required an emendation, we were fully warranted in, in resorting to it. We have been careful in making these alterations to consult the best authorities, authorities says, and especially the recent carefully revised versions of the English, excuse me, of the German, French, Dutch, Danish, Swedish, and Norwegian Bibles. 
Few certainly will object to such alterations as are found in Deuteronomy 20, I mean 32, 14, Judges 5, 20, Isaiah 30 and 32, Isaiah 35, 8, Hosea, um, Hosea 11, 2, Micah 1, 6. We have also not hesitated to insert the before Jordan and other names of rivers. Likewise, as the English revisers had to, with good reason, remove the fabulous unicorn from the Old Testament, so we have removed the equally fabulous dragon. Of course, that's what they wanted to do. They don't want to draw attention to him. As also the arrow snake of the English revision. Hmm. Arrow snake. A darting. I think that's what I meant. Darting. Isaiah 34, 15, an animal unknown to zoology. zoology. The term, as Chris probably went out and stink, they were killed like dinosaurs. The term having obviously been adopted, dodo bird, adopted through a too literal translation of the German word Siklangi. Okay, I don't know how to say it. Another particular in which we have some extent deviated from the requirements of the appendix and relates to our treatment uh, of the references in the margin to the readers of ancient versions on account of the extreme difficulty of correcting the Hebrew text by means of those um, of those versions we originally decided that it would be better to make no references to them at all. Wow. Thanks. The case is radically different from that of the New Testament where the variant readings are most found in Greek manuscripts of the New Testament itself. The authorities referred to in the, the Old Testament are translations from the Hebrew and though the date of these translations is more ancient than any extant manuscripts of Hebrew Bible of the Hebrew Bible, that yet there is no means of verifying which cert with certainty the text of these translations, and one can never get beyond plausible conjecture in attempting to con correct the Hebrew text by means of them. It is one thing to admit that a Hebrew text is probably corrupt here and there, quite another to be sure uh, how to rectify it. To be sure how to rectify it. In the English revision, there are frequent references in the margin to the ancient versions. The most of these seem to us at the best of trivial importance. Of course, of course, because they, they want to do their own version. They don't want to go back to the source material. Source material. And have been dropped. A few represent only a different vocalization of the Hebrew. A certain number, however, have to do with variations of some importance and such as may, with considerable probability, to be conjectured to represent the original Hebrew. We have therefore retained a little more than one sixth of the references given in the English revision, but have been careful to designate which of the ancient versions contain a specific specified reading that is, instead of making the vague and often inaccurate statement that some or many ancient versions represent the reading in question. In preparing the headings we have intended by means of Brief but the script returns to enable the reader to see a, at a glance what the general content of each page are. The page, what the general contents of each page are. Everything that might seem to savor of a questionable exegesis has been carefully avoided. I doubt that. Considerable attention has been paid to the paragraph divisions to the pronunciation, punctu excuse me, punctuation. While the English revisers did well to abandon the older way of making a paragraph of each verse, they often went to the opposite extreme of making the paragraphs excessively long, leaving in some cases whole pages without a break, as for example at Genesis 24 and Numbers 22-25. We have revised the paragraph divisions th throughout making them generally shorter and sometimes altering the place of the of, di, of the division. In the matter of punctuation, we have aimed to remove almost none. Many 
inconsistencies found in previous editions and also while retaining the general system adopted by our predecessors to make the book conform somewhat more nearly to moderate usage. One result is a considerable reduction of the number of columns, which are often replaced by semicolons. Colons. Colons replaced by semicolons. I'm sorry. Got columns. Occasionally by periods or commas. In such cases, a change of punctuation has been modified in a sense. As example, in Genesis 22, 5, 2, 5, uh, 14, 24, Ezekiel 20, 9, 9, 9 and 10, uh, we have also made some much more frequent use of the hyphen that has been made in previous editions. In many instances, we have a recurred to the punctuation of the authorized version. Especially when there, when where the English revisers have departed from it out of undue regard to the plausible accents of the Masoretic text, puzzle accent. Example, in Leviticus uh, six, yes, and seven, Zechariah eleven sixteen. Further particulars. Respecting the the points of difference between this edition and the English revision of 1881-85, may be learned from the appendix of the Old Testament, which is published in the first edition of the version of the Bible of, of this version of the Bible. Earnestly hoping that our work may contribute to the better understanding of the Old Testament, we recommend it to the considerate judgment of all students of sacred scripture wow 17 minutes wow that's something ASV well that is the case it seems to me that they didn't want to they like well we didn't want to do it like England did we didn't want to do it their way so we kind of want to do it our way we added some of the stuff which was in the authorized version back in but yet we left a lot of other stuff out as the revisers did so it was a, another way of doing the American way and the American way should be the authorized version way and not the you know not the ASV way or the other ways that have been that have descended now to us anyway that's it for this video on the ASV preface to the ASV I hope you enjoyed it that's a lot of reading and I might find the shorter ones to do first and then when I have time to do the longer ones I think the revised standard version which came after the ASV um, is a little bit longer and then there comes the NASB which is the newer revision of this then you got the NRSV, which I don't have, and then you got the ESV, of course. All right. Hope you enjoy. Take care.